हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द वीडियो ऑफ टाइप्स ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग फ्रेंड्स इन अवर लास्ट टू वीडियोस बेसिक्स ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग एंड प्रोसेस ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन डिटेल अबाउट व्हाट इज रिमोट सेंसिंग व्हाट इज इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन व्हाट इज इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक स्पेक्ट्रम हिस्ट्री ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग इंट्रैक्शन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन विद द एटमोस्फियर स्पेक्ट्रल सिग्नेचर्स एंड प्रोसेस ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट टाइप्स ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग एंड प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर रिमोट सेंसिंग स्टडी अबाउट द टाइप्स ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग वट आर द टाइप्स ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग सो देर आर मेनली टू टाइप्स ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग नंबर वन पैसिव रिमोट सेंसिंग नंबर टू एक्टिव रिमोट सेंसिंग पैसिव रिमोट सेंसिंग अगेन यू कैन डिवाइड इट इन टू टू पार्ट पैसिव रिमोट सेंसिंग ड्यू टू रिफ्लेक्टेड लाइट एंड पैसिव रिमोट सेंसिंग ड्यू टू इमिटेड लाइट सो वी विल फर्स्ट डिस्कस पैसिव रिमोट सेंसिंग ड्यू टू रिफ्लेक्टेड लाइट सो अगेन पैसिव रिमोट सेंसिंग यूजेज सन एज अ सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी they don't have their own source of energy so what happens in passive remote sensing the sun sends electromagnetic radiation on the earth or over a target or area which is under study that electromagnetic radiation some is absorbed for example trees building some will be reflected that reflected electromagnetic radiation will be detected and measured by a sensor which is on the satellite and that signals will be sent to the receiving stations on the earth and finally it will be analyzed and the information will be available to us simplest example simplest example of passive remote sensing is when you take pictures with the help of camera in sunlight so sunlight falls on the object it is reflected from the object that is captured by your camera so this is an example of passive remote sensing so majority of passive remote sensors operates in the visible infrared near infrared and microwave regions of the electromagnetic spectrum uh passive remote sensors mainly are of spectrometer and radiometer if you take an example spectro radiometer it is a passive remote sensor which can record the intensity of radiation in multiple wavelength bands which can give you information about the land and sea temperature color of the ocean vegetation properties cloud and aerosol properties what are the chemical compound that are present in the environment and many physical para parameters but passive remote sensing has one limitation it can't penetrate the sensors used can't penetrate the dense cloud cover so it is not of so much use in studying the tropical regions where we have, which are always covered by the dense cloud next but in the night sun is not there so sun's energy is not available then how to record the electromagnetic radiation then we use passive remote sensing due to emitted light here objects like land sea which are heated due to sunlight during day times emits heat in the night so heat is nothing but infrared radiation or if there is an fire in the jungle or there is a volcanic eruption which emits enormous amount of heat which is nothing but infrared radiation so this emitted infrared radiation can be detected by sensors which are in the satellites this sensor will detect and measure the electromagnetic radiation they will send back it into the receiving stations on the earth and finally after analysis it will be available to us now we will study about active remote sensing active remote sensing have their own source of energy they does not depends upon sun's energy this active remote sensing can operate in day and also in night so the remote sensors which are used in active remote sensing have their own source of energy as you can see there is a earth and a satellite which is having a sensor 
the satellite has its own source of energy artificial source so this source sends the electromagnetic radiations on the earth or on a target which you have to study the reflected and scattered electromagnetic radiation will be detected and measured by the sensor in the satellite and it will be sent to the receiving stations on the earth and after analysis it will be available to us so a simplest example of active remote sensing is taking pictures with the help of camera by using flash so in the darkness or night sunlight is not there but you can take pictures with the help of camera by using a flash so flash falls on the object that light is reflected and it will be captured by the camera most active sensors use microwave radiations of the electromagnetic spectrum these microwave radiations can penetrate through clouds dust smoke fog water droplets so active remote sensing can work in both day and night and also in very bad weather conditions and also in a cloudy sky uh, active remote sensors are lidar laser altimeter scattermeter and then you may have sounder for example if we take scattermeter so scattermeter is active remote sensors which is used to derive maps of the surfaces of wind speed and direction over a ocean surface so what information it can give so by using this information what amount of rainfall will be there in which area rainfall will be there that can be predicted so what does this scattermeter have it has a microwave radar which sends the signal to over the ocean surface these microwave radiations are reflected from the ocean surface or scattered from the ocean surface and they are detected and measured by the scattermeter and after analysis the information about uh, rainfall amount of rainfall and prediction of rainfall is available in laser altimeter is used to measure the height of helicopters aeroplanes or a earth surface so this laser altimeter has lidar light detection and raising ranging system so this lidar what it does it sends electromagnetic radiation to the object for example aeroplane or helicopter whose distance or height you have to measure then back scattered electromagnetic radiation is detected so both incident and back scattered electromagnetic radiation are measured then time between the two pulses is measured and using velocity of light and simple calculation the height of the aeroplane and helicopter can be detected which will be useful in military purposes and also to for the study the topography of the underlying now let us study about platforms for report sensing so what are platforms for remote sensing so platforms are nothing but the base over which remote sensor are placed to acquire information about earth surface that are known as platforms for remote sensing so there are mainly three platforms for remote sensing number 1 ground based platform remote sensing number 2 air borne platform remote sensing number 3 space borne platform remote sensing so what you can see you can see there is a agriculture land or a small piece of agriculture land or a farm and a farmer is there so if we have a camera which is mounted on a crane or a building so we can have a clear picture of that small part of field we can even identify the types of crop so this kind of remote sensing is known as ground based platform remote sensing so in ground based platform remote sensing the remote sensors are placed at a height of about 50 meters from the earth surface on towers buildings crane and tall objects like this what is the advantage of ground based platform remote sensing it can give you a picture of high quality you can detail study the small piece of farm or field even types of crops you can identify next if we want to observe the whole farm or a city then 
then as you can see if the camera or sensor is mounted on aeroplane so now you can have whole view of the field or the city so this kind of remote sensing is known as airborne platform remote sensing in airborne remote sensing the remote sensors are placed at a height of about 50 kilometers from the surface of earth on helicopters aeroplanes so with the help of this kind of remote sensing high quality resolution information or pictures you can obtain uh, then but it is less area will be covered than satellite and it is also expensive in terms of cost per unit area now if we want to study different cities or different parts of india or different parts of world then yes the remote sensor should be placed on a satellite so this kind of remote sensing is known as satellite platform based remote sensing so in satellite plat space borne remote sensing the remote sensors are placed at a height of about 100 km to 36,000 km from the earth surface on rockets, satellites, satellites, spacecraft and the satellites which are used for space borne remote sensing are known as remote sensing satellites. Now as your sensor is placed over a satellite so you can have a view of large area whole earth can be monitored by using satellites so as again you can see a man is on the ground or on the earth so only small area is visible ground based platform remote sensing next or the aeroplane there is a sensor so more area is visible but cost is been increased then on the satellite you can have a still large area and cost per unit capital or per unit area is less. So in this video we have discussed about types of remote sensing, what is active remote sensing, what is passive remote sensing, what are platforms for remote sensing. Thank you for watching this video. Please do subscribe my channel for more videos like this. Thank you.